start with the back of the van, um, pull out a little bit, um, quite, as you can see, no marks on there. I've kept the original German number plate fitting, so you can pop these out and put German plates in if you wish. Uh, it does need a better clean than this, I gave it a quick wash this morning to get rid of some of the winter grime, but there's still quite a bit left to go. But you can see there are no marks in any of the fittings. The MOT advisory said that the tail light, the brake light LED high up, some of them were faulty, that's now been replaced. And if we go around the outside the van, let's go with the first of all into the into the cupboard, the garage. Um, in the garage you can see first of all the electronics part of it with the 240 volt and also the 12 volt. There is the con isolator between mains in EHU and in inverter on the other side and down there is the inverter uh, which is a sine wave inverter 600 watt uh, I, also it comes free with it is in this box there is a 1000 um, watt non sine wave inverter which I find blows up um, bat uh, the f um, electric toothbrushes and it's not very good for um, for, uh, for chargers for, mo for uh, uh, computers as well here is the um, solar panels and if I take them out so you can see them now the solar panels are um, about 12 amps altogether and the difference between these solar panels and ones you would find on the roof is that the angle is so important the sun must hit at 90 degrees and so most solar panels on the roofs of motorhomes only work efficiently for a few hours in the few summer months on this you can angle the solar panels to wherever you, wherever the sun is and it makes up to a 40% a improvement in efficiency um, and so here I get them out in the morning plug them into the van and then as the day moves on they move around facing the sun and I can have the battery being charged all day and I have a small chain in a bag here which actually you can chain them with solar panels up to the uh, to the van so people don't go away with them so the solar panels are back in the van uh, behind them is a table and in the back of the van at the far end you should see two chairs two folding chairs um, and we'll show you what's in the things around the other side of the van when we get around to the garage on that side the solar controller is a very efficient one and gives lots of detail and you can see when you're using the solar panels you can see straight away the difference it makes in terms of the angle um, also on this side uh, like all the 12 volt things you know the 240 volt things you need for conversion hose pipe for topping up the water and again on the back here loads and loads of different cables and things of that ilk so this is the right hand side or the offside garage um, coming round, we then get to the habitation door and then from the habitation door the next thing is the gas. The gas low is fitted with one gas low refill bottle and then the other bottle there is an 11 kilogram German bottle uh, which is full and that's there in case uh, the other gas runs out but it's never had to be used yet but and also down in the bottom there next to the spanner are the also the adapters for the gas low for foreign travel and gas in foreign across Europe the big thing about the gas low as well as it being very handy is it's it's about a quarter of the price of buying bottled gas so it's a much cheaper way of running gas and you just top it up as and when you get to a garage which sells LPG okay now passengers door inside these seats are really really comfortable the isri seats um, this one has lost one of its uh, fittings 
it, it, I still have it, but it doesn't. It, it needs to be fastened in properly. And then also behind here, if I lift the curtain, is the safe. And there is the, the combination safe, which is really good, a good size, and very useful. Being Mercedes, the first aid kit is in the door here. Now I will show the defects as well. There's a little bit of bubbling rust appearing here. Not too dangerous yet. And here is where I scratched the van quite early on. Um, and I've cut, partially touched it up, but it needs to be done a little bit better. Um, and that's why I didn't clean quite so well this morning. But that scratch there and the bubbling up of the rust is the only damage on this side. Now the front of the van uh, needs a polish, uh, but I've just given it a wash down this morning. And again, left the plates with the German fitting so you can... I've got a set of German plates you can put in if you want. Um, the left headlamps have got the adapters already fastened onto the... You can just see them there, which then convert them to uh, an ordinary right-hand drive vehicle. Down to the driver's side, you'll see the plates on the doors. Um, I found, because when I was mugged, that you can actually open these doors so easily with a screwdriver and totally silently. So these plates have been fitted onto both the driver and the passenger door and then into the cab itself and the really comfortable driver's seat. Um, it's got you can, lumbar pressure, you can pump it up as well. And here is something which I'm, I've always mean, meant to fix. It's the fuse box here. Um, and it stays up sometimes, but not others. Right, toilet compartment now. You will see that I have installed a vent which works with the toilet inside. And so whenever you, um, whenever you have the toilet in position, uh, this vent take some nasty smells out and it's also got an air uh, it's got a fan in here so when you open up the vent in the toilet it actually sucks any bad air out one other thing I'll take the toilet out to show is the spare keys should you lock yourself out there are the spare keys for the van ignition doors and everything and of course you have to know the the combination code to get in them but they are tucked in the side there so should the worst happen and you lose the van keys you can get into this and then get the spare set of keys and you get into this by there is a spare key this spare key or like that taped to the van with the magnet and black tape hidden. So should you lose the keys, you can get the spare key which will open this cupboard and then open up the rest of the van. Next garage, or the other side of the garage. Um, here is the heater. Um, lots of storage, as you can see over here, including a multi-way connector should you have to share um, electricity with anybody. Uh, microwave is down there as well, that comes with it too. And in here are the wedges to balance it up, the two chairs, and also a Kadak gas barbecue, um, which works off bottle gas and uh, is really useful in the summer. The bottle gas, you, you saw the green bottle, the German bottle, but here in the door are adapters for both English and for German. Um, and so you can plug an English blue butane bottle in and, um, and then have that for your barbecue um, using the Kadak. And this also comes with the van, the Kadak barbecue, which does grills and uh, you can make breakfast on it. It's really rather good. Also in here, uh, more cable ties in the back, lights in each of the cupboard as well. So lots of storage here, lots of hanging space again, uh, really good for keeping everything stored. 
Right inside the van. Let's do the front first. The left and right berths or cushions. The table is really large and swings in all different directions and really quite useful but it can be quite tight if there's more than two of you in the van. Uh, it can take three but really four is too many to sit around the table. Um, inside uh, both these berths under the, there are storage under the cushions. You can see the condition they're in. They're all in very good condition uh, and it's all matching together with the seats in the front which of course spin round and become a foursome. Now the table it's a really good size, but it's almost too big in some ways, because um, if you want to have more people in here, so you can just see there, I think, the, the way the table can be adjusted um, across the various levels. You can screw it down and tighten it all up. And then the table is put away that it's normally easier and what I've done is I've made a much smaller table which fits beautifully like that and this is good for just having a few glasses or cups of tea um, and it also takes a laptop computer beautifully as well so that's the miniature table now you could if this was too small you, it's, it's made from a wine box you could easily um, unscrew it and put a bigger one on and have a different kind of table. But this is a good second size table just for... And it clears up, as you can see, a lot more space in Above the table area, a really good sizable locker for storage. I've used this for clothes for most of the things. Um, it's got a light inside of it as well. And then this side, a good locker as well. I've fitted new fittings onto the lockers to make them so they, they lock better in position and then it's just one pull to bring it down and then the same on this side a small shelf and another cupboard and again you see the fitting. Above the door is another shelf Lots of books are here, including the manuals for various things, and then the door itself. It's got a really big extra lock, as you can see, as well as the ordinary door lock. These aren't particularly strong really, but that is very strong. But also for security, if you're concerned at night, you can have that locked in as well, so nobody can open the door from the outside. Okay, um, the shower. One good size cupboard in there. And then shelving there and across the top. Um, and then the sink and the shower tray itself. This needs a bit of a clean, um, but it's just the, the winter dust more than anything else. Also, a uh, fan in the roof, both intake and external blowing as well, which is very useful. The external computer, that's probably better, yes, showing the battery conditions um, and the, of the, both the, the van and the other battery. Um, that rating two and a half amp is a bit strange. I think I'm not quite sure why it's showing that, but but basically that. And then also it has the uh, water conditions, the how much water there is in the various tanks, and there are two grey water tanks. And then here are uh, water lights and the fridging and the fridge and the like. The lights are nearly all um, LEDs which are nice and bright, a bit cold and a bit unforgiving. And so when I say nearly all LEDs on a couple of them, I left in the nice warm lights of a halogen.
Right, that's the cupboard under the bed, under the garage. Um, it's quite a good size. I've got electronics in there present, but also in there is a 240 volt outlet. And there is the tube heater for the winter, uh, which will also come with a van. Next to the fridge is one of the food cupboards. The sink cupboard with all the knives and forks. And then Above the galley is the cupboard with plates, pans, and glasses. This will all come with the van. Basically, the van will be ready to drive away. Um, there's another 240 volt. This one is one through the uh, inverter as well. Um, but have my finger in there. So basically when you have the, the inverter on you get 240 volts here as well and also 12 volt and then down below the galley, two burner galley, little sort of cleaning area and sink area, um, the sink itself with a washing up bowl and behind the sink is the heating and then there's the Electrolux fridge. Okay, the bed is fabulous. Uh, one of the reasons I bought this van is that it, it, it rated the bed so highly. Um, I normally leave the bed made up, as you can see here, but I'll actually, it needs to come and get the winter cover off. So if I just pull that off, and there you can see the bedding or the, the sponge material. No stains anywhere, it. it's all unstained, and it, it's just so fabulously comfortable. Um, Behind the bed, there's a cupboard, small one, probably for night wear and the like. Uh, and then a little cupboard here with sliding doors, which I, I, I suppose it might have a television in, but um, it's got sliding doors. And then it's got two no, stereo loudspeakers at the back. Again, um, moving these out the way, twin lights at the back and with switches behind. And of course, above the bed, the most amazing roof part, which can lift and tip and angle in all directions. They really are wonderful things. And again, it's got um, mosquito blind and blackout as well. The small window at the back also opens. Also at the back, is a shelf which pulls out which is really good for preparing food and the like and next to the cupboard a wine rack woo, which is empty and so we come to the cockpit here is a Garmin sat nav which you don't really use as a sat nav but it, it tells you the speed in miles per hour which is really useful because of course the speed on this is in kilometers per hour um, uh, that's where the mobile phone goes. That is a Sony Bluetooth radio with hands-free. Uh, the only problem with it, apart from the fact it's dirty, is that the hands-free part is the microphone for the, the driver is on the other is is on the passenger side because of course this is meant for an English car. So when you're using it as hands-free, you have to sort of lean across and shout. Also, here are. Reversing a reversing camera down there, very small one, but it's enough, and also reversing sensors there. And there's also a permanently running um, security camera running here as well. Other things to note, the indicator lights are really quite dim and not very loud. And I was so tired of driving along with the indicator lights still flashing because it looked so bad, I installed a 
very simple um, LED light here, which you, is fastened to the in, connected to the indicators. So when I'm indicating, that's really quite bright, and I can see it. Now, if that annoyed you, you could easily take it away. You can undo it. It's only held on by Velcro. But for me, it's really useful when I'm driving, and I don't end up annoying people with having my indicators flashing left or right all the time. So that's a little innovation there. And finally, just down there is the security, part of the security, which is the tracker. And we'll explain more about that in a little bit's time. And the final bit of security, which I always fasten, even when I'm here at home on the island or wherever I am, having been mugged once in France when I didn't fasten the doors properly, I had a, a bit of a ratchet strap then. I now have this twin hooks and a chain, which sits in the passenger's door and it takes seconds to fit and I, I fit it every time I'm stationary really um, no matter how safe the campsite it looks impressive in the sense that if only it looks through the window and so there is the extra security apart from on the tracker which we'll come to at the very end